Hey everybody, Matt here in Germersheim. I think you pronounce it Germersheim, Germany. And I am at the Spezi Bike Show, which focuses on special types of bikes. Often you're thinking of recumbents, maybe you're looking at trikes, maybe you're looking at quads, but all sorts of different uh, cycle designs. Uh, my goal with my Germany trip is to meet with HP Velotechnik, get my new frame so I can take it back to China with me. So I came a little bit early so I could pick up the Spezzy Show in Grimmer Show. Spezzy means special, and it's easy to see why. Every cycle in the show this year goes beyond the typical bicycle format to distinguish themselves in their own way. And the Spezzy show has earned the respect in the cycling community, putting on 20 shows since their first in 1996. So why don't you join me, and let's take a look at the 2015 Spezzy Bike Show. Now, a lot of you might wonder, what is this behind me? Well, these are true-to-life Velomobiles, and they're made uh, by a company called Velomobile. Now, in America, we don't see many, many Velomobiles, true-to-life, but uh, it's really amazing to see one face-to-face. -face. I mean, they're like bullets. And uh, how did you get started making this? Early 90s, we started making these first out of aluminium sh uh, plating sheets. Okay. Like riveted. Riveted. Together. Yeah, like an old fighter plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. And then later we started with the with the carbon fiber and, and the kind of epoxy, and we made the more aerodynamic, faster, lighter. How much faster than an open trike is uh, the limit? 30 percent. So what's the top speed that you've ever gotten one of these guys up to? 80 kilometers per hour. Wow. On a, fl on a flat road, no wind. On a f not even on a downhill? No, not on a flat road, no wind, just sprinting. Wow. Yeah. And I, I made a, a one hour record of 65 kilometers in one hour. On a, so you on, on a flat oval. on an average? On a, on a flat oval, yeah. yeah. Wow, wow, wow. It's like a kayak on steroids, a land kayak on steroids. <laughs> Very cool. The Spezzy Show was sort of like a cycling circus, playing host to things I've never even seen before. Europe, I was learning, has a huge cycling industry, with industrious builders turning their cycle dreams into cycle realities. Did you make this yourself? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> You're selling it? Yeah. Okay. Why? You, you gonna do something better? Yeah, okay. because it's so, you know, occupies a place uh, in my garage. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my girlfriend told she wants this seat. So okay, okay. Normal. Yeah, normal she's like, yeah. why, why you want me away from you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, where are you from? Uh, Latvia. Latvia? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You know what? Maybe I will try to ride it. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm going to be riding backwards. Ready? Yeah. Whoa, this is, this is a strange feeling riding, riding an opposite direction that I'm facing. <laughs> How long, what's the longest ride you've ever made? Uh, 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers, wow. And your girlfriend was facing the wrong way the whole time? It's, it's actually strangely comfortable. Yeah, yeah, because I cannot see where I'm going, so there's no worry. You could be running over a cliff, I wouldn't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to trust you 100%. Actually, it's really good for your girlfriend, so she has to trust you 100%. Wow. 
What a crazy feeling. I'm a, I'm a little bit big for this thing. My legs are a little long. That was a lot more comfortable than I thought it would be. <laughs> I thought I was going to be no, shaky. No, no, no. You just just take your camera, sit here and film everyone who's behind you. Yeah, I got a great video. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. All sorts of bicycles here. <laughs> Moving on, I roamed the outside area of the show. Trikes took center stage at many of the booths, highlighting the popularity of the three-wheeled configuration. But there was still room at the show for two-wheeled cycles. But in true Spezzy style, they were anything but normal. Bici capace, bici capace in Italian. Okay. It means a bicycle with capacity. Bicycle with capacity. Cool. Bici capace, seventy liters inside, and in a waterproof bag is very, is very practical because the bag is fixed on the frame. Okay. The stand is double, double leg stand, so it's very stable. When you put your child here, you you have not to worry about. The Tipping over, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Cool, cool. Well, it's nice to meet you, and okay. uh, good luck at the show. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm at uh, another booth that makes another trike. Now you know I ride the HP, but there's a lot of different trikes around, and this one is called Trident Trikes. And how long have you been in business? We have been in business about seven years. Tell me about your trikes and what sets them apart from the other brands out there and anything you'd well, like this, to... This, this particular one is, is a new one we have called Odyssey. It fits in a suitcase without taking anything. We, we're on tape, we'll, we'll, we'll put me we'll on the spot. <laughs> Wow, well there you go. Uh, went from trike to uh, suitcase in, I don't know, that was like a minute? Six seconds. Six seconds? Six seconds now. Yeah. That's pretty good, pretty good. Jai 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 <laughs> you just learned Chinese a little bit. <laughs> what is your name? My name is Ulrich Sommer. Our company is uh, Aurelion Design. Okay. GmbH. We want to build the fastest, comfortable, all the usable uh, bikes at all. So uh, let's see whether we can do it. <laughs> okay. So to put the front wheel as part of the front as possible is uh, what we want. Ideal, yeah. So, and, uh, I think one of the lightest steel tubed. Uh, recumbent bicycles. Okay, yeah. all right. Huh? Very cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> the outside of the Spezzy show was interesting, but the indoor section of the show had its own things going on, and it was playing host to a completely different set of cycle contraptions. And of course, behind me, you have HP Villatechnic. I'm a little biased. I think you can rightly rightly say that, but uh, they make an awesome product. They got one of the biggest booths at Spezzy this year, and that's not saying uh, a little bit. That's saying a lot because they've got a lot of different models in the recumbent trikes and the recumbent bikes, and they've got some really interesting people doing some really amazing things, including me with their trike brand. This show is about variety a variety of bikes and trikes, all ridden by an equal, diverse, and impressive variety of people. And one of these people is named Matthias. Okay, so the booth at HP Velotechnic is awesome. How do you pronounce it? HP? Happy Velotechnic. Happy Velotechnic. I'm gonna get better and better at that every time. You know, I'm doing my world tour, and I'm doing it my way, but here's a guy that's doing his world tour 
his way. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing. So uh, my tour is called Kite Trike Tour. Uh, trike is the same like uh, like net. But um, I'm a bit lazy, so so I don't want to. Um, what do you call it? Pedal. I want to <laughs> pedal all the time. Okay. So I use uh, use uh, use a kite as an engine. So if I have wind when I'm crossing Mongolia, I uh, I use a kite for to going very fast forward through Mongolia. Wow. I'm going in the in the early summer, so in the early summer we have very strong winds in Mongolia. So not much traffic, not much trees. So the best thing to uh, to cut your trikes from Mongolia. Awesome. Good luck. I'll catch you when you get back. <laughs> yeah. He'll ride with me somewhere. Jayo, give me a Jayo. Jayo. Is this is a Jayo? Yeah, say Jayo. Jayo. All right. <laughs> and on the date of publishing this video, he's on the road somewhere in Mongolia at this very moment. Okay, now you might say you've got to sit in the middle of the bike. That's how you ride a bike or a trike or whatever. These guys broke the rules and they're situated in the front and the back of the bike. Which is unique to me. This is very strange. Hey, my name is Alexander. Alexander? I'm Frank. Frank? Johanna. And you, these are produced in Germany? Germany. What made you think of this forward design, this, this partnership type of a bike? Uh, you can talk, com communicate. Okay. Good. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, especially for handicapped people who cannot uh, ride a bicycle. No. Okay. Have you sold any to America? No, no. No to America. So, guys in America, look at this cool, tr this cool trike. You gotta check it out. All right, thanks. It was nice to meet you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, have a great show. <laughs> Bye. Okay, hey guys. Um, I'm here at Veltop, and I was recommended to Veltop by my friend Eagle. Nice. I know him on Facebook, so you can pronounce the name the way you see it on Facebook. What, are, what have you been doing? Uh, just riding around the world yeah. since 2001. Yeah, yeah. I figured, I figured. Eagle and Paula have been traveling around the world on a recumbent trike similar to mine. Theirs is a Stein trike, mine's an HP Velotechnic. And uh, they said that if you're gonna want to have protection from the sun and the rain, the best option is a Veltop. Hi, how you doing? Hi. How long have you been in business? Seven years. Uh, tell me about your new version of the Veltop uh, for the recumbent trike and what improvements were made from the, from the one that we've seen Eagle and Paolo riding around with. Yes, the new model, you have the possibility to uh, open it to go in an uh, easier, okay. uh, easiest way. So for that, you just have to do that and so you can open it and go in. Oh. So cool. You go in and afterwards you can close uh, it up. Close it up. So do you think that's gonna make your life a little easier? Yeah. Yeah? And yeah. you can use it as sail if you have the, the back Yeah, wind. there you go. A good headwind. Just whoosh, release the brakes <laughs> and let it roll. You have the possibility now to uh, remove the middle part. Okay. And uh, put it uh, over here and uh, so you have a good vision in summer you can uh, have the canopy just for the sun protection and uh, have a wind nice goes breeze in coming and, through uh, so, and yeah. have a good vision so cool uh, this is a second improvement we have also changed the fabric is a uh, very good for the UV protection okay so, um, that's the main improvement of this model but well, thank you so much okay thank you to you good luck with the show yeah Now walking through the show, you really get an appreciation for the variety of cycles out there. And you say cycles because you can't really quantify it in even trikes or bikes. There's four wheels, there's two wheels, there's one wheels, there's electric, there's human powered, and there's everything in between. 
um, there's dynamos, there's hubs, there's sprockets and chains. All good, better, and best. And the ones at the show here are among the best. So this has been a great opportunity for me to check out what the industry has to offer in the form of human-powered or electric cycles. Okay, so now I'm at a unique trailer system called I do. Yes, right? that's right. Uh, yeah. And I'm with Roland. Hello. Roland. And can you tell me a little bit about uh, the I do trailers? Because I see two different types. And could you tell me a little bit about each one here? Of course. We have two systems. Okay. Like you say. One with the wheels behind the trailer. Okay. And the other system, the big brother, uh -huh. on the left and the right. This yeah. one you can use till 90 kilograms. Okay. And this one till 40. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You have a little bit to look. And the special thing is that every wheel is single. Independent really suspension. Single. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really sensitive. Well, could you upgrade to a 20 inch tire if somebody wanted? Or we do you have, have to have the 16? With 16, 18, 20, or if you want, fat bikes. Fat, fat tires. Yeah. Okay. What's the weight of this trailer frame? Nearly 10 kilograms. 10. All of a little aluminum? Yeah. Okay. Put it up if you want. You will see it. 10 kilograms. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can one hand it. Yeah, yeah. And you use a Weber hitch? Weber, yeah, yeah. But Weber. it's uh, special for us, mate. Uh, the system here inside is special for our trailer. And you will see this trailer oh, you wow. can put up in this thing. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. And the, the trunk? Uh, how much volume is inside the trunk? 145 liter. Wow. But you can change it. Yeah. We want with this trailer system that you can change and make what you want to do. Not you. I. Whatever I want to do, what I can do. do I do it. <laughs> you can open the system, oh. push, push that little button, and you can change the high. Oh, okay. You can raise or lower. Yeah. yeah. To get yeah. better yeah. way yeah. on the street yeah. or if in the forest. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. You push just this brake yeah. to get this wheel stopped and the back wheel on the same moment. So how does, the, is this the linkage for the, uh, yeah. that's the linkage? Yeah, hydraulic. Wow. You will see, just put up, that's all. Wow. That is so nice. The crew at iDo were interested in me testing out their trailer designs. So Roland escorted me out to the Spezzy test track where people interested in test riding any number of interesting cycle designs at the show can give them a whirl. Specifically, they wanted me to take a ride towing their electric assist style trailer. So what is the motor? Is it assist, right? It just assists the ride. Yeah, I want that you get the feeling that's, that you, when you have it behind 90 kilogram, that you just it's take effortless. your bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how, how long does that battery last? Oh, that, it depends, because normally when you start to um, get your um, miles per hour, yeah. then... Um, Once you're up to speed, it's very little bit amount of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, you need it just to cut, to start up yeah. and then it's enough. Wow. Inside you will see the small trailer with the motor and the uh -huh. battery. Yeah. And this is now the big trailer with the big battery. Uh-huh. And you push Where's you the battery? Is it inside? Look at this. Oh, okay. Okay. What's the weight of this trailer with the battery? Um uh, uh, the trailer nearly twelve kilogram with the sparks. Uh -huh. And then you will have eight to ten kilogram with the motor and the battery and controller and everything what you need so nearly 20 kilogram so uh here's the accelerator you have to, to push him to get the power of okay. the motor okay and he push you till six kilometers per hour okay. then stop and then you have to pedal carry it up yeah and use your bike like your bike yeah so that's the great thing that you don't um have to feel oh shit I have 50 or 60 kilogram behind me and I okay. came not from this place where yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus braking, you have, don't have the momentum. You know, that brakes yeah. behind will take well, away the momentum. You're on the traffic light and normally you make something like that and you have yeah. an accident. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now you start just up and that's not a problem. Very cool. 
and this motor push you till 25 kilometers per hour. So I can ride this? Of course. All right, let's get it, give it a try. The first iDo trailer they had me test out was their 400 series. They had upgraded the trailer with oversized fat tires and adjusted the frame to support an entire kayak. Okay, so I'm pulling behind a kayak and he says I'll barely be able to feel it. As a matter of fact, I'll have to watch out because I will not realize that I'm pulling a kayak behind me. So let's see. So it is true, with the amount of uh, load that I'm carrying, it's oddly relaxing. And even with the fat tires, it's kind of cool. So you have to go a little bit wide so that you don't hit anybody with the back of the trailer. I can see what he's talking about. It's, it's strange. You know, I'm very happy with the trailer that I chose, but it's interesting to ride a trailer from somebody who's a professional and making cycle trailers. How was the feeling? That was uh, that was really nice. I I could feel a little weight. Obviously, there's something. A little weight, but you ha don't. Forget. But there's no kayak, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. behind you, there are nearly 40 kilograms. Wow. Each trailer, each bike, it's really different. Okay. So, start with this one. All right. And we're with the. I'm so gonna I'm gonna turn the camera off so I can I can focus on the ride a little bit. So. You saw the kayak. I'm going to ride these two. Okay, so I just rode this, which was the loaded cargo trailer with power, with brakes. And I got to tell you, it was pretty awesome. It was almost, I, I don't expect the thing that should slow me down the most to be the thing that pushes me the most. It was like a complete uh, opposite from what you would think of when you carry a loaded trailer. Uh, having that push was really made it very enjoyable. The, the, the positive of having the electric is for me the same as a negative for me because when I'm traveling around the world it's a choice I made not to use any electricity. And have you ever had taken these on a very heavy road like, a, like I ride in China. I, I went through three trailers already. Burley Nomad I destroyed first day. And then I tried an Avenir, like an Avenir style trailer, and I broke that in a week. And I just kept breaking trailers because the roads I go on are very, very dangerous. Very, very rugged. If my trailer ever breaks, then I'm getting this one. <laughs> very cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. You may know these guys if you know my uh, Facebook. This is Paula. And you met Egel uh, earlier when we were at the Veltop booth. We were doing a little talking about the new top. And uh, they're set up here at Spezi. And uh, we were just talking about the differences between riding a bike and riding a trike. And how many countries did you ride through on a bike? On a bike, 29 countries. And how many kilometers estimate? Uh, 45,000 kilometers. And now how many kilometers have you gotten down on the trike? Think about it, about 25,000 kilometers on okay. a trike. And can you compare the differences between a trike and a bike in, 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 in your opinion? So for some small words, we, we for our personal choice prefer the trikes. It's a lot more comfortable for your body, you have the natural sitting position, you have a lot, a lot more safety because you have three wheels you can't tip over. Yeah. We, with the well top we are seeing very good, the, the yellow roof is very good noticeable. On, yeah, noticeable for but you were saying that like your shoulders, your hands yes. and all of this stuff, when you're touring with a lot of weight on a bicycle, your arms are down, a lot of times you're hunched over your shoulders. You have big pressing points, we have big luggage also at the front wheel, so you really have to keep up everything straight yeah. and we have all the pressure here. But this position where you always put your head up. And yeah, 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 that, that right there. Your neck. Yeah. And that's all gone with the trike. You yeah. just sit in like in your TV, sit and in a very natural. And you are position. kind of watching your own TV program, course, which is life. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what? Beer having a beer, just like at home. Yeah. 
Uh, so what is different about your trip as opposed to other people that travel around the world? You have two major differences. One is called Rambo, and what's the other name? Caramba. Caramba. And uh, if, if, if you want to know how diverse world travelers are, this couple is traveling around the world with their dogs, which are with us right now. They're sleeping, but what is it like traveling around the world with two puppies, two dogs? They're not puppies anymore. No puppies anymore. One dog is 11. One is five, and I mean, that's your personal bodyguard, that's your personal entertainment, it's your kids, it's your hugger in a, in a cold tent, it's whatever you like. And they warn, right? Maybe they they'll warn. bark if somebody's coming too close. They won't kill anybody, but when we have a good sleep after a long day of riding, they hear somebody coming up and they warn us, they warn the people not to come close. It's perfect. Yeah. And they've come with you since you've had the trikes or did you carry them along on your bike trips as well? So we started, we got one dog in Colombia when we were still on our bikes. Uh -huh. Uh, and after some years, Rambo found, found a very nice girlfriend, and there, there she hey. was, the daughter. Fireworks? We couldn't leave her behind, so okay. now we are with two dogs. Yeah, that's fantastic. And when your future plans, we were just talking about what's the next step, and uh, they have a very interesting next step, and that is? A motorhome. Motorhome, but they're not getting rid of the trikes, they're actually getting a motorhome with a built-in garage under the beds, so that they can go from a fully loaded trike tour to an RV allowing you to do little jumps with emptied trikes. It's a real good fun triking yeah, without yeah, luggage yeah. and really enjoying the trikes you're having fun. Awesome. Well, you know, I've seen you so long uh, on, on Facebook to see your face to face is really nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's Paula and Igor. Okay, Jayo. Jayo. <laughs> so Karamba is the blacker, this the darker Karamba, one. and this is Rambo. He is 11 years old, Colombian, Medellin, Paisa, and his daughter, five years old, from San Agustin Huila. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rambo has written his first book, Rambo el Viajero. <laughs> And uh, the book is in German, right? Of course, it is so, in German. So. so if we find somebody really wanting it to translate into English, you're very welcome to <laughs> contact us. And what do you? What do you? What is your? What is your purpose in travel? Everybody has the reason. Yeah. What is your reason for traveling around the world like this? We are fulfilling our life dream. Okay. From when? From when you were in high school, or was this a recent thing, like ten years ago, or? That was a dream of both of us when we haven't met yet. Okay. And then we met, and then we thought, okay, let's try it. Perfect. It works together. It works. It still works. Okay. Sometimes we say we're still on honeymoon. <laughs> Forever honeymoon. What? Uh, what do you? What do you do to finance a trip like this? I mean, most people travel around the world. Their first question to me is, uh, how do you do it? How do you do it? We always answer with money, but then people are not satisfied. But we just saved a lot, sold everything, our house, car, all the belongings. Yeah. Quit our jobs and set off. We were living out of savings in the beginning. In the meantime, we do all kinds of stuff like, like picture shows on DVD, like the book, like articles for newspaper. Yeah. Everything what comes up, even working like renovation, cleaning, yeah. translating, and that's part of the guide, adventure. Housekeeping, we were uh, also on the sailing boat, being company to people, all kinds of stuff. If wow. you have time, stuff comes up. That's right. Yeah. If you're open, always yeah, things walk yeah. through the door. Yeah. So see, you don't have to be a rich millionaire or have an opportunity, like some people say you're lucky. Oh, you're lucky, yeah. you know. Yeah. But we're just people. We choose to we give it all go. up. Just and go and, and something will come up. Right, right. Okay, what's your website? Our website is 